Hello, brethren, sisters. How you doing? Uh, Lord Jesus, um, Father, as I go to... As I go to do nothing, Lord, please empty me of myself, of my pride, of my... Um, anything that stands in the way of you, Lord, glorifying yourself through your word. I am incapable of speaking any word unto your congregation, Lord Jesus Christ, Father. Please remove me from this equation, Lord Jesus, that you may be glorified through the speaking of your word. Please guide my words. Please give me wisdom, understanding, and knowledge, and all skill and learning, Lord Jesus Christ. Please speak to this congregation through your word. Please bless this mouth, bless this machine, and Give them eyes to see, ears to hear, and understanding hearts, Lord Jesus Christ, Father. My Father in heaven, in Jesus' name, Amen. <clears throat> Get your King James Bible. The real Bible. One verse to start out with. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 22, verse... Six. Go there in your King James Bible, the real Bible. I expect you to go there in the King James Bible, the real Bible. Search the scriptures. This video is not for entertainment. This is for educational purposes. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. <laughs> Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. A child. You know, a little rug rat. Go to... 1st Timothy chapter 4, 1st Timothy chapter 4, verse 12, 1st Timothy chapter 4, verse 12, let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Beg your pardon for me just butchering that, paraphrasing that, but let no man despise thy youth. I have heard an uh, individual from the United Kingdom specifically Try to expound on this and use this verse in an inappropriate context. Timothy it is generally accepted was probably in his mid-twenties, early to mid-twenties. We don't really know. But Timothy was a youth. Was he a little child before the age of accountability? No. No, he was not. But he was obviously a youth. I personally believe, along with several of the other brethren, that Timothy was in his mid-twenties. His actual age, we do not know. Okay? But like I said, I had heard someone from the United Kingdom use this verse as a means to say it were okay for, say, like an 18-year-old who just recently got saved in order to teach the body of Christ, to instruct the body of Christ. No, 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 no. Listen, if you're like 14, 18, 19, and you just get saved, and you're just now reading this book, listen to me. As a teenager, 
If you get saved and born again, truly saved and born again, you are broken over your sins. You know that you're not a good person, that your sins put the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross, and because of your sins, you deserve to go to hell. And you are trusting on the Lord Jesus Christ, on what he did for you on the cross. You have faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? You get saved as a teenager. You can give your testimony unto your peers. You can witness unto older people, yes. But as a teenager, especially a teenager, you ain't got no business teaching the body of Christ. You've got no business trying to instruct the brothers and sisters. Okay? You ain't been out there enough. You ain't been shot at. You haven't had your senses exercised. Okay? But as we looked at in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. And then we see here in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12, let no man despise thy youth. Okay? Timothy was a kid in his mid-twenties, I believe. But be thou an example of the believers. Be an example of, not to the believers. Of the believers. In word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. In other words... Did your life change, huh? Once you got saved, did the Lord change your life? Right? Right? But see, like I said, now this is the third time I'm going to make reference to a specific individual in the United Kingdom. Used this verse in a video of his. And he did take it way out of context. And try to apply it inaccurately. Why did Paul say this to Timothy? Why? 2 Timothy chapter 3. Remember Proverbs chapter 22 verse 6? Okay? 2 Timothy chapter 3 verses 14 on to verse 17. Go there, of course. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 14 on to verse 17. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Are you looking at that? And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. See, Timothy as a child, in keeping with Proverbs chapter 22 verse 6, was brought up in the scriptures to when he got saved and converted he was very well prepared to preach Jesus Christ and him crucified okay by the time Paul in the book of Acts met up with Timothy Timothy was well grounded in the scriptures already then when he heard the gospel from Paul got saved okay Okay? Timothy was already well grounded in the scriptures. He was brought up from a child in the scriptures. Okay? So, when Paul said, let no man despise thy youth, Paul said that to Timothy because, verse 15, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, in keeping with Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6. Was Timothy... The result of a childhood conversion. 
I don't think so. I don't think so. And that's, that's what I want to talk to you about. Childhood conversions. Is there such a thing? Is there such a thing? Okay. I'm going to be reading to you something now from the Catechism of the Catholic Church. I'm going to be reading in this the Bible of the Catholic on page 346 their verse number 1 uh, 1229 1230 and 1231 okay I am going to be reading from here down pause that and read it if you wish okay from here down pause it and read it and that will finish right there where my finger is okay you can see the number for their other verse right there but it ends right there okay <clears throat> i'm gonna find this interesting how is the sacrament of baptism celebrated christian initiation and any of you who are that familiar with uh, Freemasonry and with Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Okay. First, before we read any further, water baptism is not required for your salvation. Okay. I don't have the time to get into that too deeply in this video. But there are those out there who believe that Acts 2.38 is the gospel for us today. Okay, there was a dispensational thing going on still within Acts 2.38. It was already the Christian dispensation. Christ died for sins according to the scriptures, and he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Yes, that was the beginning of this, the Christian dispensation. But see, the gospel had to first be offered on to the Jews exclusively. Okay? That's what was going on in Acts chapter 2. Specifically, there wasn't any Gentiles there. And Peter, knowing only the baptism of John, as far as, you know, going, you know, blah, 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 you know, water baptism, okay? That's why he said that kind of stuff, okay? Because it was primarily given to the Jews first. And then the Jewish people as a nation rejected the gospel in Acts chapter 7, and then hence us Gentiles were brought in to make the Jew jealous, okay? And by Acts chapter 15, everybody was preaching the gospel that Paul preached, okay? I have a video on that if you're curious about any of that. it's The video is called, What Was Going On in the Book of Acts, okay? Check that out amongst my videos if you're curious, okay? I might link it, link it in this video, might not, okay? But water baptism is not necessary for your salvation, okay? That is work salvation, and that is what these bozos teach you, okay? Catholicism is work salvation without any, sal um, without any assurance of salvation. It's called the sin of presumption, okay? But I wanted to explain that. Now, I'm going to read this to you. <clears throat> Their verse number 1229. From the time of the apostles, becoming a Christian has been accomplished by a journey and initiation in several stages. <laughs> yeah. This journey can be covered rapidly or slowly, but certain essential elements will always have to be present. Proclamation of the word, and they capital W it. Acceptance of the gospel entailing conversion. Profession of faith. Baptism itself. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit 
and admission to Eucharistic communion. And there are those out there who say that I, who preach repentance towards God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ, the repentance is brokenness, repenting of your self-righteousness. You need to be broken before you can be fixed. Okay? Let's continue in this piece of junk. There, verse number 1230. This initiation has varied greatly through the centuries according to circumstances. In the first centuries of the church, Christian initiation saw considerable development. A long period of catechumenate included a series of preparatory rites. <laughs> and I wonder where the Masons get this stuff. <clears throat> Which were liturgical landmarks along the path of the catechumenal, of the catechumenal preparation and culminated in the celebration of the sacraments of Christian initiation. Where infant baptism has become the form in which the sacrament is usually celebrated, it has become a single act encapsulating the preparatory stages of Christian initiation in a very abridged way. By its very nature, infant baptism requires a post Baptismal catechumenate. <laughs> so twice. <laughs> Nor, not only is there a need for instruction after baptism, but also for the necessary flowering of baptismal grace in personal growth. The catechism has its proper place here. <clears throat> so Christian initiation. Got to go through these several stages to be initiated into Christianity. Christian initiation. Chapter and verse! Nonsense. But I want to read this to you now. This is going to be on page 350. And this is their verse number because this is the Bible to the Catholic. This is going to be in their verse number 250. Okay. Right there. This is what I'm going to be reading you. Pause it and read it yourself. Baptism of infants. Born with a fallen human nature and tainted by original sin, children also have need of the new birth in baptism to be freed from the power of darkness and brought into the realm of the freedom of the children of God, to which all men are called. The sheer gratuitousness of the grace of salvation is particularly manifest in infant baptism. The church, <coughs> excuse me, and the parents would deny a child the priceless grace of becoming a child of God were they not to confer baptism shortly after birth. So, how does that link with childhood conversion? Think about it. Christians, as a little kid, go to some church building, Sunday school. They might hear of sin and be taught that Jesus Christ died for sins according to the scriptures. Amen. Amen. And they may even believe that Jesus Christ died for sins according to the scriptures. But see, a child before the age of accountability, before they know that they ain't a good person, 
that they're going to hell, that their sins that they have committed put Jesus Christ on the cross. Because it says even a child is known by his own doings, whether they whether it be good or whether it be evil. I just paraphrase that, beg your pardon. Okay? But a child before the age of accountability doesn't get the gravity of sin. Brethren, an example. You don't know how many times when I'm outside my door witnessing the people, passing out tracks and stuff like that. You don't know how many times in conversation, are you a sinner? Oh, oh yeah, I'm a sinner. Now granted, I'm talking to adults, but see, the principle applies, which is something that these easy believism heretics have influenced modern Christendom where they jump over the repentance or change repentance, okay? Yeah, I'm a sinner. Are you any good? Well, I'm a sinner. Are you any good? Well, I'm not that bad. <laughs> Do you know you deserve to go to hell? Hmm? Are you a good person? Do you know that your sins put Jesus Christ on the cross? And unless you repent of your self-righteousness, thinking that you're good enough, that you were worth Christ dying for, you're going to go to hell. Unless you repent of your self-righteousness and believe on what Jesus Christ did for you on the cross, you believe on him personally. Now see, a little child can know that they're a sinner, but can they grasp that brokenness? Hence, some people will say, I was saved when I was five years old in Sunday school at a Baptist church. <laughs> I was baptized as a baby. Childhood conversion. And because you were saved when you were like five, eight, ten, you you think you're saved, right? Right? Childhood conversion. Are they legitimate? I don't think so. No. Why, Brad? Why are you saying that? So you're saying a five-year-old to ten-year-old ain't saved before the age of accountability. Turn in your King James Bible to Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18. Okay? <clears throat> Matthew chapter 18, we're going to be reading verses 1 under verse 11. Okay? Um, I... Childhood conversions, I don't buy them. I don't believe in childhood conversions. Let's read. <clears throat> Go there in the scriptures. Matthew chapter 18, verses 1 under verse 11. Okay? See, we're dealing with another consequence of just of these easy believism heretics saying, just believe, just believe, without dealing with Brokenness. You need to be broken before you can be fixed. Let's read. <clears throat> Pick your pardon. Verse, uh, Matthew chapter 18, verses 1 on to verse 11. <clears throat> At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Kingdom of Heaven, which only appears in the book of Matthew, which I believe appears 33 or 34 times in the book of Matthew alone. Kingdom of Heaven. Kingdom of God, which could be mean both the physical, literal kingdom or the spiritual, the heart, you know, the spirit. Okay? Could be the spiritual. 
but Kingdom of Heaven is 110% of the time always a reference to the actual physical, literal kingdom in Jerusalem where our Lord, our God and Savior, Jesus Christ, our Father, will be ruling and reigning from when he come back in the millennial kingdom after the time of Jacob's trouble. See, kingdom of heaven is always a reference to a physical kingdom with Jesus Christ, God, our Lord and Savior, our Father, as king on earth. Okay, you need to remember that. So let's continue. And Jesus called a little child unto him, and set him in the midst of them, and said, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted. Key word there. Converted. And become as little children. Ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Become as little children. We're going to get, we're going to expound on that a little bit more in a bit here, but let's keep reading. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child. Very key. Very key. Humble himself as this little child. Look at verse 3. Except ye be converted and become as little children. Okay? And here in verse 4. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Let's continue. And whoso shall receive one such little child in my name, receiveth me. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck, and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe unto the world because of offenses, for it must needs be that offenses come. But woe to that man by whom the offense cometh. Wherefore, if thy hand or foot offend thee, cut them off, and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life halt or maimed, rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into hell fire. <clears throat> Jesus isn't talking about actually, literally, you know, mutilating yourself, okay? I have a video, One Place You Never Want to Go, a very old video of mine where I address this. I might link it in this one. I might, okay? But he's not talking about mutilation, okay? Let's continue. Verse 9, And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life with one eye, rather than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. Right here, verse 10. Pay attention. Let's read this. Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones. Pay attention. Read this slowly with me. For I say unto you, that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. For the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. The verse 10. Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you, that in heaven, their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. This is a very important and key verse here. Why so? Before the age of accountability, a child before he or she is aware of the gravity of their sin. If they were to die, they would go to heaven. That's what I believe. And I personally believe that's what this verse is talking about. Look at look at the verse, okay? Look at that verse. Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones, kids. For I say unto you, that in heaven 
Their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. Okay? Okay? A child before the age of accountability, a five-year-old, a six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, even a twelve-year-old, are probably, most likely, not going to be able to comprehend, okay, Romans chapters 1, chapter 2, and Romans chapter 3, verses 1, on to verse 18. Romans chapters 1, 2, and Romans chapter 3, verses 1 through 18, are there specifically for lost people that they may be convicted of the gravity of their sin. That they may be made aware that they ain't good and that they deserve to go to hell and they ain't nothing they can do to save themselves. See, that's what the easy believism heretic skips over. They'll come to Romans chapter 3 and then they'll start at verse 22 and end at verse 28. Some of them. It varies. But they'll, they'll skip 1 through 18, which specifically deal with, you ain't a good person. Your sins put Jesus Christ on the cross. You deserve to go to hell. You ain't a good person. Of course, I'm talking about myself. So you know. Okay. Hi. Hello. I'm a sinner who is cheap. Okay, but a five, six-year-old, they ain't going to get that. There's no way. You tell, <laughs> you go up to a six-year-old, okay, a ten-year-old, you aren't good. Your sin put Jesus Christ on the cross. You're going to hell. That kid isn't going to get the gravity of that. You say otherwise, look at me, you tell me otherwise, you liar, you're a liar, don't kid me, who you think you're fooling, hmm? a six year old, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, maybe even a twelve year old, we're going to address the twelve year old thing here in a little bit, but a little kid, single digits, going to be able to grasp the weight of Romans 1, 2, and 3, verses 1 through 18? Doubt it. Highly doubt it. Okay? Highly doubt it. Because the kids, they're not at the age of accountability. They can't understand or grasp it. Lost people who are beyond the age of accountability, teenagers, okay, for example, a teenager, 14 from maybe 16, 8, front and up, okay, they're going to understand. They can understand Romans 1, 2, and 3, verses 1 through 18. Romans 1, 2, and 3, verses 1 through 18 are there specifically to give to the lost, to make them aware of their condition and their need for a Savior. That they ain't no good. It deals specifically with the brokenness to bring them onto repentance of their self-righteousness. Okay? Childhood conversion five years old, from 10 to 11 or 12, you got saved in a Baptist, Methodist, Lutheran <laughs> church in Sunday school at five, eight years old? No. No way. And you, you reach the, the age of accountability and you grow into adulthood, trusting your childhood conversion No way, buddy. No. If you're a trust, if you're an adult, male, male or female, man or woman, okay? If you're an adult, trusting a childhood con uh, conversion 
childhood conversion into your adult years, uh, you, you, you need to search the scriptures here and make sure. You need to examine yourself in the light of scripture to see if you're truly saved. Because the idea of a childhood conversion does not come from the scriptures. It comes from the tradition of men. Roman Catholicism. Childhood conversion is not here. It comes from this. The traditions of man. Satan. Okay? See, <clears throat> verse 10 if a child before they reach the age of accountability, that they can understand the gravity of their sin. I, you know, I've seen six years old, six year olds. Are you a sinner? Yeah. Do they understand the gravity of what being a sinner is? Other than, oh, I just did something wrong. There's more to it than that. Because, like I said, people outside your door, they know they're a sinner. But see, they're not dealing with their self-righteousness. And brother, sister, friend, foe, false convert. Brokenness of your self-righteousness is a requirement for you to be saved. Oh! <gasps> Brad, you just added, oh, shut your mouth. Shut up. Shut up. Say I add to the gospel. Because you got to be broken first. You shut up. Shut your mouth. I'm so tired of you types of people who are so against repentance. Oh, it's from going from unbelief to belief. Oh, shut up. You got to deal with your self-righteousness. That's what Romans chapter 1, 2, and 3 verses 1 on to verse 18 deal with specifically. And a child before the age of accountability ain't going to get that. And if a child before the age of accountability die, verse 10, Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones, for I say unto you, that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. They die before the age of accountability, they go to heaven. That's what I believe, and I that's what I believe. This is what the scripture is saying here. That's what our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, God manifest in the flesh is saying. Okay? That's what I believe he's saying. But now look up back at verse 3. Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted, converted, and look at verse 4, whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Okay? Go to Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10 verses 13 on to verse 16. Okay? Beg your pardon. <clears throat> uh, sorry for getting a little irritated. Listen to me. You need to deal with the fact that you ain't good. That there ain't anything in you that was worth our Lord Jesus Christ dying for you. On the cross, okay? And those of you easy believism heretics, step over that. And you don't deal with it. You say, first get them saved, then deal with it. No, you got it backwards. You deal with it first through the scripture. And see, you not dealing with that is making false converts. Okay? You have to deal with the fact that you ain't good. That you are worthy to go to hell. That's all you're worth. Is going to hell. Okay? It is by God's grace that you are saved. 
Okay? You have to deal with that. Skipping over that is so dangerous and makes you a false convert. See? And that's the danger of trusting in a childhood conversion. Now let's 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 look at this, okay? Verses 13 on to verse 16 in Mark chapter 10. And they brought young children to him, that he should touch them. And his, and his disciples rebuked those that brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased, and said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of God. Now, again, Kingdom of heaven is always a reference to the actual physical, literal kingdom in Jerusalem, where our Lord God and Savior, Jesus Christ, our Father, is going to be reigning from in Jerusalem. Okay, Kingdom of heaven is always a physical kingdom. Kingdom of God could mean either or. Kingdom of heaven, the physical kingdom, or spiritual kingdom. Got to keep that in mind. Which one is this? Let's continue. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall not enter therein. Hold your place here and go back to Matthew chapter 18. Okay? Hold your place there. Okay? Go back to Matthew chapter 18. Verses 3 and 4. Okay? Uh, we'll read verse 2. And Jesus called a little child unto him, and set him in the midst of them, and said, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Talking about the physical kingdom. Whosoever there shall, therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Humble himself as this little child. And now when you look back at Mark, Chapter 10, verse 15. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. Note, in Matthew chapter 18, verse 3, Except ye be converted. And in verse 4, Humble himself as this little child. A little kid who is before the age of accountability, okay, an innocent little child, they look at mommy and daddy as everything. A little child needs their father, their mother, right? They are dependent on their father, okay? It's a thing of deep. Dependence. Get it? So, when Jesus says here in verse 15, Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child. That doesn't mean suck your thumb, goo goo. No, 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 no. When you're a little kid, you depend on daddy and mommy for everything. From henceforth, we'll say, Daddy, Father. You're dependent on your Father for everything. As a saved, born-again, King James Bible-believing Christian today in the Christian dispensation, okay, you are dependent on your Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, who died for sins according to the Scriptures and was buried and rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. You, when it says, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child. It's an issue of dependence. You are dependent on the Lord for what he did for you. That he is your salvation. Not a mental decision you made. Not that you were saved from a childhood conversion when you were five years old. Not that you were baptized as a child. Not that you were baptized. No. It's a dependence on the Lord, Jesus Christ, our Father. 
You becoming as a little child after when you are saved means you are depending on the Lord Jesus Christ, your true father, your true father, okay? And a little child before the age of accountability who can't grasp the gravity of their sin. They're dependent on mommy and daddy. Daddy and mommy. And daddy and mommy, you're supposed to bring them up in the scriptures so that whenever that child reaches that age of accountability, they will be prepared. See, that's why Paul said to Timothy, let no man despise thy youth. Because Timothy was brought up in the scriptures. So when he reached that age of accountability, when he understood the gravity of his sin. Now remember too, back when Timothy was around, the New Testament scriptures as we have them today wasn't around. So how did he learn about it? Isaiah 53. I can almost guarantee you. Isaiah 53. If you can't read Isaiah 53 and get cut to the heart by that, <laughs> wow, you, you got some issues, brother, sister. Okay? Like the Ethiop Ethiopian eunuch. Okay? Those who argue against brokenness of sin, not a mere conviction of sin. See, that's the difference. See, easy believism heretics say conviction of sin. What about brokenness? You read Isaiah 53 because during this time, these scriptures were not available as we have them today in the finished product, the finished Word of God, the per perfect, preserved, given by inspiration Word of God, the King James Bible, the real Bible, wasn't there yet. But they had Isaiah 53. Why do you think a lot of the Jewish people in the synagogues avoid Isaiah 53 or try to twist Isaiah 53 into making it about the nation of Israel rather than a personal savior? Dying for your personal sins. See. Do you get it? Becoming as a child. Means you are dependent on the Lord. And a little kid before the age of accountability. Isn't going to get that. They're not going to understand. The gravity of their sin. Oh, they might know, be aware that they have sinned, but the gravity of it, the gravity of it. Listen, friends, salvation is simple. The hard part is being broken of yourself, coming to an end of yourself. That's a requirement. And if that, if that ain't there in you, you're not saved. Oh, yeah, you're not saved. Okay? Deal with it. If you're not broken before you come to the Lord Jesus Christ, of yourself, of your pride, of your self-righteousness, if you don't come to Him broken, but just come to him because of something up here. Because you're trusting in a childhood conversion that you got at some church building. Trusting in an infant baptism. You ain't saved. You're not saved. Sorry. Deal with it. Deal with it. Okay? Enough is enough, brethren. Childhood conversion? I don't think so. Being like a child is a dependence on the Lord. A childlike dependence on the Lord. You know, like when the Lord called Peter 
<laughs> Catholic. When the Lord called Peter out of the boat, and Peter started walking on the water, and when he saw the wind boisterous, he got scared. He's like, oh, he started to slowly sink. What did Peter say? Lord, save me! He called on the Lord. Put his eyes back on Jesus. Okay? Becoming a child when you are saved is a dependence on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what that means. Okay? That's what that means, friends. Now, I want to deal with the 12-year-old thing. 12 years old. A lot of people seem to think that the age of accountability is specifically 12 years old. The actual age of accountability, when a child can reach the age when he understands the gravity of his sin, <clears throat> the gravity of what it took God to do away with that sin, and the consequence of your sin, they, they point to 12 years old. It's different for the child. It's ultimately up to the Lord to when the Lord wants to reveal to that child personally the truth. Could it be before the age of 12? I doubt it. But why do they say 12? Why does, well, 12 years old, that's the age of accountability. Why do they say that? Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2, verse 42. Come on, you need to see this. This is where the 12-year-old thing comes up, okay? Verse 42 in Luke chapter 2. And when he, Jesus, was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. They think a lot of people think the age of accountability is associated with 12 because of Luke 2, verse 42. And when he, Jesus, was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And they say also at verse 46, and it came to pass that after three days they found him, Jesus, in the temple sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. Verse 47, And they and all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. Okay? <laughs> That's because God was right there present. The Lord Jesus Christ. God manifest in the flesh. Okay? It's because he's God. Okay? <laughs> You know, it's like, what? of course. Okay? Of course. <laughs> you know, they, they, a lot of people like to put that, well, okay, here's Jesus. He was asking the doctors questions and, you know, stuff like that. And they were all astonished at, at his understanding and his answers. So most people mentally equate that, okay, so that means the age of accountability is at 12. No, not necessarily. No. We're talking about God manifest in the flesh. Okay? Okay? But that's where they get the 12-year-old thing from. From this right here. Okay? Okay? Listen, brethren. Okay? Childhood conversion? No, I don't buy it. You may be an adult. You may be saved now. But if you're an adult and thinking that you were saved when you were like between 5 and 10 or 12, saved before the age of accountability, and you're trusting in your childhood conversion? Eh, I don't think so, buddy. Sister. I don't think so. 
If you're trusting in a childhood conversion, my goodness, man, woman, if you're trusting in an infant baptism, I if if, if you're trusting in the, the tradition of men, and you're an adult, and you have and you have not a changed life because you are saved, you know the Lord's the one who changes your life. You, you, you need to question. You need to get in this book and to see if you're really saved. Okay? You really need to see if you are saved. Because, now go back to 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. Let no man despise thy youth. Okay, now already explained this. But be thou an example of... Of the believers in word, how you speak, in conversation. What's your conversation like? Does your conversation line up with scripture? Or are you being sidetracked? Sidetracked or diverted? Okay? In charity, selflessness. Not selfishness, selflessness. Charity. Is selflessness okay in spirit? Do you have the spirit of God or the anti-Christ spirit, which is the spirit of the world? In faith, what's your faith in? Your infant baptism, your childhood conversion, or as a child, your father, the Lord Jesus Christ, in purity. Listen, Christian, we, we're we all going to sin. Our soul and spirit is still in this sagging skin suit. Yes, okay? Yes. But, brothers, sisters, brethren, sisters, if you have to tell someone you're a Christian, if you have to wear something on you that, Tells people you're a Christian. If the Spirit, you know, God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the Lord is that Spirit, the Holy Ghost, you know, if the Lord in you isn't giving witness unto the world when you're outside your door that you're a saved person, you're probably not saved. Okay? If you got to tell the people, if you have to tell them, and they can't tell because of the spirit that is inside you. Are you really saved? What distinguishes you from the lost? Are they going to... Let me give you a really good example. Are they going to put you, who claims to be saved, with those who are lost? Can you tell the difference? Huh? What differentiates you from this? Get it? Huh? Impurity. See, trusting in a childhood conversion and then thinking, oh, well, I'm, I'm saved. I'm, I'm, I'm saved already. Where's the change that comes after you are saved? If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature or a new creation. Excuse me. Paraphrase that. You get the point. Jesus Christ, our God, our Savior, our Father, will change your life after you are saved. That's the way it happens. Okay? Listen. If you're someone out there who's trusting in your childhood conversion and There's no change in your life that comes supernaturally from the Lord, not because of what you do. You really need to hunker down, search the scriptures, and see whether these things are so. I don't buy for one second 
childhood conversion. No way. No way. Like I said, a child before the age of accountability dies, I believe they go to heaven. I believe we saw the evidence for that in Matthew chapter 18, verse 10 specifically. Okay? And being converted and becoming as a child is having a childlike dependence on your father for everything. The Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? If you're dependent on men, commentaries, other things like that, and not the Lord Jesus Christ in this book alone, the scriptures alone. You need to you need to do an inventory, as they say. Enough's enough, brethren. And incidentally, <clears throat> if you think you've come across somebody who's trusting in a childhood conversion. But there ain't something right there. Here's your, here's your threshing instrument. Here's your pruning hook. Check them out. Okay? That's how I answer that question. Love you guys. And I'll see you in the next video, whenever that may be. Hopefully a little later today. Okay?